about you? What was your favorite thing at, during Christmas well, after, growing up? After all, we ate, the whole family ate, friends, we got together and we did um, carols in the neighborhood, mm. even though it sounded terrible. <laughs> we did it. and uh, But my favorite was just, I love Christmas music. Mm. And so the songs that came on the radio was amazing. Well, I mean, it's that time of the year. If you want to listen, we can. Radio. Who needs a radio, Franklin? Are you ready? No. Oh, I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own, more than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. Ooh. All I want for Christmas is you. Hey, look, there's the young adults at Kent Janice. All right, pick them up. What have we done? In the theme this morning, joy to the world. And so if you have your Bible, Psalm 98, joy to the world. Joy to the world is actually a hymn that was written almost 300 years ago. A guy by the name of Isaac Watts wrote this hymn based on Psalm 98, which we're about to dive into. Little did he know that this carol, song, Joy to the World, would become one of the most popular Christmas carols out there, and there's a lot of them, and one of the very few that's written in over 15 different languages. This is a popular, popular Christmas carol. But what did Isaac Watts see in Psalm 98 that inspired this powerful carol that shouts to the world? I want to encourage you to get to Psalm 98. We're going to start in verse 4, Psalm 98, verse 4. But it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Now notice in that bumper video when I was singing, it wasn't a joyful noise. It was a noise. Uh, but make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fill it. The world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. You know, I don't know about you, but when we were kids and singing this song, it was easy to have jolly, right? As we experienced just moments ago, these kids that don't know any better, don't know about the broken world, not necessarily stress about the things that we stress about. Go back to that time at a young age where you, you, you had so much joy and you sang these carols and sang joy to the world and it just, it felt different. Now we're all grown up. Now we all have real world problems, right? Stress of family, jobs. Can we still sing this great carol as Isaac Watts wrote about? 
I don't know about you, but sometimes the Christmas season and the time of the holidays, and I know it's supposed to be jolly, it's supposed to be fun, it's Christmas, right? But sometimes this season and this holiday can be difficult. If we're just being honest in this room, it can be very, very stressful. Anxiety up, depression up. It could be lonely. It could cause a lot of heartache. It could cause a lot of anger. It could cause a lot of frustration. And if you don't believe me, about four o'clock, get on Broadway. All right? And I've reminded myself this past week, knowing that I was going to preach on joy to the world, finding myself in a lot of different situations going, David, joy to the world. But there was something about this song, not just for Isaac Watts wanting to write about it, but there's something about this song that should capture everything that God has ever wanted to instill in you and to bring you back this Christmas season with joy. So what is it about this song? Number one, if you're taking notes this morning, Christmas is that God became man. Christmas is that God became man. Everything else to this holiday season is just add-ons. The food, it's great. The family time, the relationships, the gifts, all of it can be great. But at the end of the day, it's just add-ons to the main thing is that God became man. Jesus came to the world, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Jesus is the deity of God living in humanity. And we call that incarnation. Colossians 2 verse 9 says, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Jesus wasn't just another baby. The Christmas baby is God becoming man. Colossians 1.19, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Jesus wasn't just another baby when he was born. He was the one that was going to change everything. This baby could change everything. Now, I don't know about you, but when you were born, it was a little bit different, okay? Angels didn't come to announce your birth. Now, some of you might think they did, right? Because you think you're all that in a bag of chips. But there was something different about that baby, that angels would come and announce his birth to everyone. Shepherds literally hurried to see him. And after they saw him, they couldn't stop repeating, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. This wasn't just a new baby in town. This was God in a manger. God went from God the Spirit to God the man, from God in heaven to God with us, Emmanuel. Of course, the earth sings, and so should we. In this carol, in this song, it says this, and you don't want me singing it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. What do we see primarily in God coming to us? Well, number one, we see God's love for us. God's love for us. And it, it, he's always taken that first step of love. It says in scripture that we can love because God first loved us. And every part of your life, from the very beginning of time to Genesis, up to now, and eventually to Revelation when Jesus comes back, God has intervened on our behalf every step of the way to show you that he pursues you, that he loves you. He created you in the image of himself. You are his prized possession. And above everything else, he loves you more than anything. And in this, God coming to us shows us 
his love for you. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes this morning. Salvation is always, always coming of God to man. Man does not ascend to God. God descends to man. No other religion out there do you see this. No religion has a God humbling himself for you. It is always a God that requires mankind, you, to do better. You got to do better. You got to earn more. You got to show your worth. You have to show your value. But in Christianity and the story of Christmas, you have a God humbling himself and coming to us to take away the sins of the world and to restore a world that is broken, to give it a new life. And we all are broken, we all are sinners. And let every heart this Christmas prepare him room. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. And Isaac Watts, who wrote this hymn, was a pastor, was a minister. And even though he was a pastor and a minister, he struggled just like you struggle. He had pain just like you have pain. And there was something about this song that he just wasn't writing it for the people. He was writing it as a reminder to himself. Because if we're honest this morning, we all struggle with joy. Fighting for joy this holiday season. And maybe that's you. Maybe you come into this room and it's real easy to to fake the jolly, to walk through the motions. But deep down in your heart, deep down in your situations and circumstances, you're struggling to find joy. And, And Isaac Watts was like that. He had a disease. He had a physical illness in his life which caused him to not pastor. He also struggled within his church he faced constant opposition about church by people inside the church and even outside the church that doesn't happen right he was an ordinary person finding and striving every week and every month to find joy to find the purpose of why he was created, the purpose of why he exists today. And the same goes to you and the same goes to me. And so he wrote this song, not as a a song for everybody to to, to sing. Obviously, it it, it was for that and and it is that, but it was a constant reminder to him in his situation, in his circumstances, it's not something that brings joy. It's someone that brings joy and that person is Jesus Christ. We all have struggles. We are sinners in need of a perfect savior. We are all imperfect people needing to be brought back to a perfect God. Enjoy this season through this carol, through this song, joy to the world. It's found in a person. And that person's name is Jesus Christ. Number two, Jesus became like us. So we could be like him. In this carol, in this song, it shows us that Jesus became like us so that we could become like him. The son of God became like us that he would make us sons and daughters of God. That you are a son and a daughter of the most high king. And this cute little baby Jesus in the manger is the glory of the invisible God. Hebrews lets us know a little bit about this in chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It says this, he is the radiance of the glory of God. Who? Jesus. And the exact imprint of his nature. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having becoming as much superior 
to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The birth of Jesus is more than a supernatural display of God's power becoming man. The birth had a clear purpose. And that purpose was Jesus would lead us back to him. A perfect savior. That God created you to be in a relationship with him. That creation was perfect and sin would come into the world. And sin demands a sacrifice. There must be punishment. There must be something that brings us back to a holy God. And, and God knew, knew that this was impossible with man. And so that Jesus would come as a baby to come and to live a life that you couldn't live. Have you ever thought, why would Jesus come as a baby? To come and redo everything that was broken. To struggle where you struggle. To have pain where you have pain. Except to do it how it was supposed to be done. Perfection. And that perfection, living a life that you couldn't live, and to die on a cross that was meant for you and for me, would bring us back to a saving relationship with God. This carol, this song, Joy to the World, says this, He comes, He comes to make His blessings flow. What is the greatest blessing in life or death? God. The presence of God, just being in the presence of God himself is the greatest blessing you can ever have in your life. And that's why we have as a mission in the church, the greatest need in your life is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, to know him. There's no greater need out there in this world. And maybe you come into this room and you've never had that moment where you've said, I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior. This Christmas season, I have put in my faith and trust in so many different things, but instead of putting my faith and trust in something, this Christmas and this Sunday, I need to put my faith and trust in someone and that person is Jesus Christ. His presence is all you need. In fact, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. The greatest blessing is not the absence of trials this Christmas, but the presence and company of God with us. It's not what you don't have or what you need. It's not the missing link this Christmas season. It's not the absence. And this Christmas season brings a lot of weight. The church I came from back in Louisiana, two of our, our precious senior adults went to be with the Lord Jesus Christ this past week. This week alone in our church, a sweet, sweet senior adult lady went to be with Jesus Christ. This season of Christmas and this season of the holidays can bring a lot of emptiness in our lives. It can bring a lot of hurt. It can bring a lot of loneliness. But it's not the absence of what we do not have. It's the presence and company of what we do have. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Are you struggling with joy this morning? Are you struggling and you bring in a lot of Emptiness of what you don't have instead of what Jesus has brought you, Emmanuel. The purpose of the baby is the all-satisfying glory of God and saving grace for humanity. At Christmas, Jesus became the human that understands your pain, understands your sorrow, your sin, and the cross was possible because the birth was undeniable. And lastly, this morning, if you're taking notes, number three, the Lord Jesus Christ came to reveal God to us. The Lord Jesus Christ came to reveal God to us. There are only two things you can do about the revelation of God in Jesus Christ. 
Only two things. Number one, you can recognize that he is the son of God, that he is the savior of the world, and you can repent from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ and put your faith and trust in him. That's number one. Or number two, you can deny Jesus Christ and walk and do life as if you can do it on your own and lead to emptiness. You know, having the thought of of funerals this week, of just people passing, reminds me of this. And you do this and I do this. And I'm just going to be blunt with this this morning. A lot of times when we go to a funeral or we celebrate someone's life, most of us and all of us, and you've done this and I've done this, and we say, at least they're in a better place now. And we picture and we symbolize the default place is always heaven. Can I be as truthful as I am with you right now? The default place is not heaven but a real place called hell. Separated from Jesus Christ. And the only place that you can have Jesus in heaven is admitting that you're a sinner and believing in Jesus Christ, turning from your sins and putting your faith in him. That's all in this birth, this Christmas of Jesus coming to you was to do and restore what you couldn't do to bring you back to a God that created you. It's the greatest news you could ever hear, and it's the greatest news you can ever see. And because of that, just like we talked about last week, go tell it on the mountain. Shout it to the rooftops. It's not a question of calling. It's a question of obedience. And because of this good news, Jesus would come to you. Psalm 98, which birthed joy to the world, ends with this in verse 8 and 9. And we're going to close this morning. But Psalm 98, last two verses, it says this. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. Christ's first coming and Christ's return is good news. But it's only good news for those who accept it. Don't just make room for Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Give everything of who you are to the King of kings and the Lord of lords because he's greater He's better. He bore our sin and shame and gave us hope, joy to the world. Do you believe that today? And the last thing I want you to write down is this, and we're going to close this morning. The miracle of Christmas, the miracle of Christmas is that this invisible God, this God who created the heavens and earth, who created the waters, who created the mountains, who created you in the image of himself. This invisible God who knows everything, who's all sovereign, would become visible in Jesus Christ. Miracle, the greatest miracle of all. That God would come for you, humbling himself And making a way to give you life, joy. Colossians 1, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And only Jesus is the perfect image of God. Only through Jesus we can see and be reconciled to God. The last verse in this carol He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations proof. The glorious of his righteousness and the wonders of his love. The wonders of his love and the wonders, wonders of his love. The greatest news this Christmas, joy to the world. The Savior 
has come. And this is not an ordinary baby. This baby came to change everything. No, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. And oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me.